Hey guys, Chad Hoover had me on the show and we were talking about the worst and the best kayak fishing companies out there in 2023. You're gonna love this. Let's hop on in. Who's the best manufacturer out there from the standpoint of, you know, all the factors, growth, marketing, innovating, supporting the community, you know, kind of like that comprehensive health assessment. Who would you say is or might be the best in the game at that? And then I'm going to put you on the spot at the end to say who you think is the worst. You know, I'll answer it. I get the question a lot, just like you and a lot of other content creators who who follow and, and kind of, you know, share videos about kayak fishing. And everyone's always looking for recommendations, right? Okay, Darren, you're in there, you're doing videos, you're in this kayak, you're in that kayak. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like tout myself as someone who's like been in and had my hands on and eyes on like a smorgasbord of kayaks like you have, Chad. But I only recommend only a few brands. And so it's going to be, I'm either gonna be promoting Bonafide because I own a P127, love it. I like Natives, a few of those. Uh, I'm going to, I'm gonna sh throw out Old Town for individuals and it was Hobie that's kind of been crossed off my list recently um because of a lot of videos and a lot of conversations I've had I mean I, I got my own show right so I'm, I'm starting to hear different perspectives from people who may cover Hobies more than I do I just had Alex Foguera on this past Tuesday right and he you know flips kayaks and he's like the kayak flipping guy um but he had a he had a video out where there were some issues with warranties and hull warranties and doing weld warranties and kind of the the brand that they used to have. Like, oh, you never have to worry about it. Even if you sell it to someone else or buy a used one, it's like covered for life in perpetuity. It's starting to crack a little bit, not definitively. Like, I don't, I've read like something from Hobie that said that. But those are the kayaks I typically recommend, unless someone's budget is so low, then I got to go down to like, lifetimes and stuff like that which i really don't like to spend a lot of my time i'm kind of in it to win it there's my no, list. I, I, i'm asking for your opinion on what you would lay your money down for and you did that all right guys i want to hear from you what are the kayak fishing companies that you would lay your money down for maybe your top three so obviously you might own one or two but what are some that maybe you don't own that you'd be like oh yeah i'd be definitely interested in investing in that company let us know in the comments below all right let's head back in yeah. we'll, we'll pick up on the hobie discussion and the warranty thing when we get into the end of the show, which is the warranty discussion, I think it's probably the most pertinent issue in kayak fishing right now. And I think that, you know, it makes sense to make you guys wait till the end of the video to watch that. So you listen to the rest of the nonsense to get there, right? That's how we, that's how we do this, Darren, right? So <laughs> you let a little bit of the cat out of the bag. So now I'm going to, well, you almost kind of did both at one time. So who would you consider the worst, right? Are you, what, you know, what, I, would, I, what would you say? I didn't share who I think the worst, who I think is the worst are these, the deals, right? That seem too good to be true. And I'm not sure, I'm not saying I'm not going to throw out one name out there, but if you're starting to find like pedal kayaks in the $1,200 to $1,500 range, right? These are these too good to be true deals. You're like, oh, I'm looking at this SS-127 and I'm also looking at this one and it's $700 cheaper and they look the same. Like, I know they look the same, but brother, sister, you're going to have issues, right? It's going to be a thinner plastic. Your motor drive is not built quality and you're going to end up upgrading and trying to sell this thing on a secondary market here in about a season and so it's a lot of those i don't know you got you know brooklyn's and hoodoos and like i said i haven't had eyes on these or actually been in them but i've read enough forums and heard enough feedback people don't stay in them too long but they want the power they want the pedal drive they want the motor they want all this stuff that you know bona fide you know 3200 3000 plus kayaks or paddle power kayaks you know 1500 kayaks but they want them for half the price and it becomes issues. Well, you said you weren't going to name any names, and then you threw a couple out there. So I did. I'll throw them out there. Funny. I'm allowed to have an opinion, You're, right? Yeah, you know, and that's why I asked for it. All right, so I'm going to put myself on the hook for answering the same question you did. I think comprehensively, and everybody knows that I'm affiliated with Bonafide. Everybody knows that when it comes down to the boat that I choose the most, the ones that you know sponsor my television show in the past, and and all that, and I'm you know I was there for the birth uh, Luther who founded the company is a really close friend of mine. I was in the factory when the ovens went in. I was there for the transition to the merger with uh, Big Adventures and all that kind of stuff. And then it's actually Big Adventures uh, and specifically Tyler Brown, who's the marketing director, who embraced my idea. I went to him and I said, listen, I know you guys sponsor me, but I feel like I could do a better job of being a better leader, a better advocate for kite fishing if I was able to paddle, pedal, or power all the boats out there. And you know, I'm always going to come back to Bonafide. You know, it's it's my favorite. And it's kind of like having a favorite kid. You can say you want all you want that you don't have favorites, but we have favorites. But, but that doesn't mean that I don't respect the other brands out there. 
which is why if I called one company doing it the best, it would be big adventures because that's the combination of bona fide and native. I think bona fide has been flat for four or five years. The introduction of the river has started that trajectory back in the right direction. And the introduction of the skiff is going to do that. And I think that it would be extra bias of me to base my opinion on bona fide on where I know it's going versus where it is. I have to say, based on what everybody knows and what's out there in the industry with the short term that the river has been on the market, that I can't really give a major you know, grade to bona fide. Bona fide was flat for four or five years. Native was relatively flat for four or five years. I think the Slayer Max 12 was a mint, you know, boat. I think it was like a good boat in application, but there was a few misses in it. But I think the new Titan series, the new stuff that they're doing, especially that Titan X series, mm. is not just a home run. It's one of those home runs where the guy swings and knows so confidently that he hit a home run that he just stands in the batter's box and lingers for an extra few seconds to kind of <laughs> kind of like put it on the pitcher. Then he kind of flips the bat and just trots down the baseline. It's one of those kind of home runs. All right, guys, take a break for a second. Let's talk about the Titan X, right? So do you think that is a kayak that's gonna be a staple in the kayak fishing industry? Or do you think it's a miss? I wanna hear your opinions. Let me know in the comments below. All right, hop back in. Mm -hmm. It's actually not my cup of tea. That's why I've not used pro anglers and other boats out there on the market uh, for a long time. So if I was to grade a quote unquote company, that'd be Big Adventures. I'd say Big Adventures is one of the best. But if I grade a brand by itself, I would say that Old Town standalone as an individual brand is probably the best in the game right now because they've 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 hit all of my categories um if you guys don't watch my content or if you do you're you're familiar with the fact that i use this acronym scrape before you scrape all your money together here's the things that you need to think about stability and standability comfort rigability reliability affordability performance and then everything else and i base that on years of experience both in being a marketing guy helping design boats, knowing what factors go into it, hearing what dealers say the boats have to have, and then also doing really well in retail when I own Hook One, kite fishing gear, Hook One Outfitters, and interacting with, you know, thousands of customers over the years. And we did that very successfully. So I'm only saying that to, to quantify that when I think about a boat, a brand, its position in the market, the things that it's doing, I have the benefit of thinking of it more comprehensively than most people because I'm a participant, angler, pro staffer for some companies. I've been pro staff director for other companies. I've liaisoned with the executive leadership from the CEOs to the marketing directors to the engineers at most of the major companies out there. And this industry is very incestuous. So it's like musical chairs where a lot of these guys were at Confluence Outdoor, which is now Pelican International. Then they were at Johnson Outdoors and they were at Jackson and they were here and there and, and the mm -hmm. other. And so I'm going to tell you that I think that Old Town is probably the best right now, comprehensively from that balance of stability, comfort, rigability, reliability, affordability, performance, and then that everything else, you know, transportability, um, weight for what it is, uh, storage, you know, all those other, you know, ability to interact with carts and other things um, falls under that everything else category. And so I think that that, Coupled with the fact that they just come out with the EPDL, which, you know, I did a video, I said, is it innovative or innovation or mistake? And what I really meant by that was, are they ahead of the power curve? Like, are they bringing out this massive innovation mm. at a time when we're somewhat flat on sales because of that secondary sales market? And we'll talk about that when we get into the, to the state of the industry. So I'm going to give you my top three right now. I think it's Big Adventures as a company, but mm. I think it's Old Town as a brand. I think. Mm. Uh, native is probably number two overall. And then I think Bonafide is number three. You want to call it honorable mention. Honorable mention for me is going to be New Canoe followed by Crescent. Because I think what both of those guys do from servicing their dealers and servicing their market, they might have the best brand loyalty in the game. I think Crescent does a really good job of cultivating that community of buyers. And I think they do a really good job of taking care of their customers. And we'll get to talking about that in warranty. And I think they do a really good job of taking care of their dealers. I think the company that takes better care of the dealers than any brand in the game is New Canoe. Mm -hmm. New Canoe wears taking care of their dealers on their sleeve. And so, and again, we'll get into that a little bit when we get into the warranty discussion at the end. Um, but those brands are the brands that I think are killing it. Again, brand standalone, probably Old Town Company, 
big adventures. And then I think that big adventures makes that leap because the two together make a number one, because I think that native is number two and, and bonafide right behind them at number three. I'm going to split my worst because I'm going to say what you said. And because you said it and you stole my thunder, I got to say something else. So you, you kind of, you, you opted for the easy one, which is the Alibaba brands. Any of the brands out there that you or I could go to Alibaba.com mm. and I'm actually going to do a video on this. So you guys stay tuned for a video series on starting a kayak company. Once I get over this hump with the financial strain that I'm under with the divorce, probably October, November, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to order a kayak. I'm going to record the entire process and I'm going to share it with you guys and show you just how easy it is to start a, what I call a cake decorator brand. You go to the mm-hmm. website, you give them a logo, you give them a name. They take the parts and pieces of the popular manufacturers out there that have spent the money on R and D, which is research and development. And then they've created R and C or R and D, which is research and duplicate or research and copy. And it, it makes my blood boil when I see that stuff more so than most people, because I know how much work, time, effort, and energy. I know how much money is spent on prototypes. I know how much time is spent on traveling to paddle those prototypes. I know how hard it is to bring those products to market. And so it's a lot like Arctic coolers when they sit back and let Yeti do all the marketing and Yeti to do all the stuff and all this other stuff. And then they've plowed the field, pulled up the rocks, dug up the roots, and then they want to come in behind them and drop their seed. They can do that because the other work has been done. They can sell it for half price because they're cutting dealers out the loop. They don't have to establish that market. They don't have to build that consumer demand. They just get to come in and copy it and benefit from it. And to me, that's not the American way. And for everybody that purchases those types of products, I hate to say it, but don't America up and talk about how much of a patriot you are, because that is the exact opposite of what we really should be doing. We should be supporting American companies, American brands. The only imported company out there that I think is still doing it really right um, is Feel Free. You know, Feel Free does import their kayaks, but they own the factory. They work directly with a family that runs the business. Um, They protect their intellectual property and they invest in innovation. So Feel Free, in my opinion, uh, is an American brand. Even though they don't make the boats here, they're an American company that outsources the building, but it's not an RNC. It's not a research and copy operation. So I would throw all the Alibaba brands into that umbrella, similar to what you said, without calling out any of the names. And I'm going to say this, and it pains me to say it, because I'm going to get some blowback. I'm going to get some flack. Um, This is one of those sound bites that's going to end up on Instagram. John Uber said this. But the company that I consider a premium company that I think has regressed the most is Jackson Kayak. Mm. And... I think that they made three fundamental flaws and and I'm going to address those and then we'll get into uh, weight limits, the status of the industry and things like that. Jackson stopped prototype testing as much as they used to. They stopped. um, I don't want to say they stopped innovating because they didn't really. But what they did is they got rid of several of their more popular boats and implemented some boats that I think are misses. I think the biggest miss in kayak fishing in the last five years is the Jackson NAR. Yeah. And it's not because it's a bad boat. It's because it's not the boat that it could be. It's not the boat that it should have been. And it's not the boat that they purported that it was going to be in the buildup to its release. The deck flexing, some of the issues, some of the stuff that it had, there's just a lot of misses in that boat. Getting rid of the big rig getting rid of the Liska, getting rid of some of those boats, which I'm hearing are are now kind of coming back or dealers can order them in limited quantities Mm. was a little bit, in my opinion, them being tone deaf to the market, tone deaf to the industry. You know, I know that they came out with the take two, but the take two doesn't satisfy the big boy boat that the big rig did. Right. Telling a big dude, Oh, we'll just fish the tandem boat and take out one of the seats. (laughs) That's not, that's not a home run. That's not even a dribbler to the mound. And the take two, it's in my opinion, just an oversized version of the U pick. So they've got like all this redundancy in the boats that they moved forward with. They put all their eggs in one basket with this NAR, and then the NAR was a miss. And then they got rid of some of their best selling boats ever. Uh, I think the the star in the lineup right now is the Kusa X and the the uh, the bike. The problem with the Kusa X is, and I'm just going to tell you guys right now, give you a heads up. 
I was going to do a river series, the RVR 119 versus the Sholey versus the Kusa X. I'm now going to be doing a series of the RVR versus the Sholey because I think those are only the only two true river boats in the game right now because the Kusa X is so flat bottom and it's so wide that it's a great ATV boat where you can do a little bit of everything. But I wouldn't consider it a river boat, you know, because the bottom's so wide and so flat. If you go around an outside bend in a river, you're going to the outside. There's nothing you can do about it. And in a true river boat, you can lean and edge and ferry across and not get swept into a tree. And so I think the Kusa X is a pretty good river boat for up to the most, you know, once you get past class two, forget about it. Or if you get into too many switchbacks and too much technical stuff. It's a good beginner, beginner river boat because it is so big and so wide and maneuverable that honestly, through an open, wide rapid, you can just throw your hands up in the air and say, we, and go right through it. But I also think that that gives some people a false sense of security, and then they're going to take that boat out on a more technical river, and they're going to get their ass handed to them. Mm. So with the Kusa X and the bike being the shining stars in their lineup right now, think about that. Think about that back from when Jackson had the Kusa HD, they had the the Kudas, they had the Big Rig, they had the Kilroys, they had the Liska. I still think to this day, the Liska might be one of the better river boats that not only Jackson's ever made, but anybody ever made. Mm. And so they got rid of that boat. And so I'm a little bit biased because I really love that boat. So I think of the premium brands, let's throw Alibaba out there and say you covered that and I, I agree with you. But of the brands that you know, had an existing level of prominence that have slipped the most. I think it's it's Jackson. It's sad because I love Jackson as a company. I love what they did in the innovation game. Uh, I tried to get a lawn chair style seat through the gate. Drew Gregory and I both were kind of like championing it at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, Native actually, Native Watercraft was actually the first to do it. A lot of people give Jackson credit for it, but Native did it in their Ultimate Series first, and they actually made a seat that goes on uh, a board called the Versa board which is like their version of a hybrid fishing kayak sub and it had a 360 swivel seat on it. So a lot of people mm -hmm. think they're the first to do it when actually Native was. And Native actually wasn't even the first. The first was actually Diablo kayaks out of Texas who basically just took a Larry chair, you know, a travel chair that folds up and put that on their boat. So truly they were the first stadium seat, lawn chair style seat. But Jackson was the ones that innovated with it. They're the ones that popularized it. They're the ones that put it on an actual – mainstream fishing boat and they were the first to truly embrace fishing specific design i'm going to give credit where credit's due because jackson did that everybody else started before that every fishing kayak had to have this like wreck angle to it that way the dealers can sell it to a wreck person or mm. a fisherman so we had to make all these compromises and it would drive you crazy uh, for example on the wilderness systems attack hans and i designed this badass cockpit I had this interchangeable little thing in the front and because of the dealer feedback, we ended up with like a piece of starboard with a hole in it because they said it had to have a drink holder. Mm -hmm. Like everywhere on your boat's a drink holder. If you got an Algene bottle, just sit it down. If you've got a water bottle, stick it in your backpack, stick it in your crate, stick it in the tank well. You don't have to have a hole to put it in. But because dealers said, oh, no, the first question that all of our paddlers ask is where's the drink holder? You know, fishermen, our drink holders at the end of our arm, it's called our hand. And then every <laughs> manufacturer out there makes a drink holder. Yak Attack makes one, Ram makes one, Yak Gadget makes one, yep. insert company name here. So if you want a drink holder, you can put it on there. You don't have to give up the best spot on the boat. And I think the I think that the Wilderness Systems Attack is one of the Picassos of kayak fishing. And it's a Picasso with bird shit right in the middle of it because of that little square thing <laughs> where there's a damn drink holder that actually turns into a place where water pools up. It turns into this mosquito larva haven. <laughs> And that's all could have been avoided by just doing a true kayak fishing specific design. So even though I'm kind of skipping Jackson under the bus a little bit, I do have to say it's not because of truly just where they are, but it's the delta between where they came from and where they are. All right, guys, Jackson Kayaks, do you believe Chad's statement where you believe that that is the company that has fallen the furthest, especially if you own a Jackson Kayak? I want to hear from you. Go ahead and throw your thoughts in the comments below. Let's head back in. They were right. the ones that listened to anglers the most. They were the ones that took the advice. And I was in the board meetings with the companies saying, we got to do this to catch up to Jackson. We got to do this to beat Jackson. There was this beat Jackson thing 
for two years. I don't know what happened. So if you're listening, Jackson, find your mojo again, man. Grow your kayak fishing pair back and start doing what you used to do. Stop vanilla and down everything to the point that you don't have anything. So I'll get off that soapbox, but. Well, really yeah. quick. I had a question for you. I think I would want to man up and call out an actual company and you just took the Alibaba, Alibaba Rouse. That's what it is. I agree. Alibaba by far is the worst. But if I'm going to say of the brands that are out there, um, and I can tell you this, there are pro staffers on their team that are going to publicly disagree with this, but probably I've heard the frustration from them as well. <laughs> so start listening to your pro staff. Start listening to your anglers. Start listening to the people that do this and bring back your innovation, innovative spirit, start taking risks again, start doing the things that you need to do to not be, uh, not be on the down, on the downturn. So that, that's my kind of assessment of manufacturers. Um, real, real quick, got a question for you. So you saw the, I don't know, rise and fall, call what you wish. Why? What's your speculation on what happened, right? That's a, that's a pretty big disparity between you were leading the way to no one really like you only have two boats that are kicking butt. One thing you're going to learn about business, if you really dig into it deep enough, is there's this thing called the founder's fallacy. Mm. And the founder of the company, and I fall into this with KBF because I'm going through it right now, is that you get burnt out and you get fatigued both spiritually, mentally, financially. And then you need one life event, like I with the divorce, to make it to where those balls that you were juggling you can't, you ever seen somebody drop one ball while they're juggling? Not really. Only if they mean to, like if they're just kicking a ball out. But for the most part, if you're juggling seven, eight balls and you drop one of them, you drop them all. Right. Cause right. you, and so I think what happened was, is, you know, and eight, Eric Jackson is a really good friend of mine. You're going to see us fishing together in a YouTube video in a, in a week. Um, love the guy to death. But EJ is like that, that cartoon with the dog and say like, squirrel, you know, and he's over here. And I think he chased a lot of different rainbows. And I think that when he started chasing the FLW thing and trying to be a professional in the bass boat world, mm. I think that the inmates ran the asylum, if you will. And he was already a inmate himself when he was there. But I just think that they lost leadership and direction. Uh, money became a problem. And I think when you get into a stress mode, it's very hard to be anything other than in survival mode. Sure. And then, of course, you know, Eric left the company, uh, founded Apex and did that whole thing. So that that the culmination of all the things I'm talking about was very public. So it's not like I'm making something up or sharing something that if you even got a slight bit of insight into this community or industry, you already know what I'm talking about. But I think that's the biggest part. The thing I'm most excited about is that I don't know how long it's been. So it would be unfair to say she's had enough time to, quote unquote, fix it. But his daughter, Emily, Emily Jackson, who's a world class whitewater world champion, whitewater kayaker, and is also a brilliant marketing mind and is also a fisherman. She's an angler, not just like she does it. She's good at it. She's finished in the top 10 of every KBF event she's ever fished. If she applied herself to kayak fishing, she would be one of the names that you know when you say kayak fishing. Mm. Because of her being put into a position of leadership at the company, I think that you're going to see a major turnaround. I think that you're going to be very excited about some of the things that are happening. Uh, it was uh, public recently that a good friend of mine, longtime friend of mine, uh, Jameson Redding, um, just departed Jackson as the brand manager, had other options in life. He's chasing the TV show thing like I did. Uh, his dad is uh, about to retire from his business. So he's not leaving because of being disgruntled or any of that other stuff. He just was leaving because life changed for him. And so I think if they find the right brand manager uh, or if Emily like brings that role into her level of responsibilities, I think you're going to see a major turnaround in the Jackson posture, if that makes sense, you know? Sure. Um, and, and again, I'm not trying to crap on anybody. I want to give credit where credit's due. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm biased in the places that I'm biased, but I address those and talk about them. It has been a very humbling experience that Tyler believed in me enough from, from Big Adventures to say, yeah, we can sponsor you and you can still paddle all these other boats and be objective about them. Uh, because it's probably been the best two years of my, my kayak fishing career on having a grasp on what's out there. Mm -hmm. Rather than listening to the noise 
about certain things. I'm actually out there experiencing it myself. In fact, I had a gentleman call me who showed up to the headquarters today. Hey, I want to try some boats out. He shows up. He's like 6'4", like 350 pounds, built like a brick, you know, a house. And uh, he's like, what boat do you want to put me in? And I said, I'm going to put you in the new Canoe Unlimited, bro, because I think that's the <laughs> first boat you should consider. And then we'll back it down from there. You know, and then we're going to put you in the new canoe unlimited. We're going to put you in the bonafide SS-127 and then maybe even the RS-117, depending on where your budget's at. But I think that, um, oh, and then we're going to put them in the old town uh, MK-106. And he's actually out right down the hill from the KVF headquarters right now trying out some different boats. And so I do believe that there is a, we've gotten away from the try before you buy thing. We've gotten mm -hmm. away from doing really good demos. And I think that the biggest angler, dissatisfaction that comes from boats is buying the wrong boat based on misinformation. Mm. Um, you get these pro staff wolf packs that, and it's usually like the people that just got put on the pro staff in like the last two years, they're still green. They don't know how to be a pro. They're trying to do their best to represent the brand. And every time somebody asks a question about a particular kayak, this drives me. If I had one big pet peeve, the biggest pet peeve that I have in kayak fishing, I want you guys to listen to this one. If somebody says on a group or on their Facebook page, hey, guys, I've been researching kayaks for about two years, and I've narrowed it down to the Hobie Passport R and the, I don't know, Crescent Light Tackle. What do you guys think? I think you should try the Jackson, whatever, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. And then they go blow a trumpet. And then all the rest of that wolf pack of new pros come in and they dog pile on the post to say, mm -hmm. this guy's going to try to buy something other than our boat. Let's change his mind. And you just muddy the waters. If they didn't consider your boat in the two year process of narrowing it down to the boats that they think they want, do a better job of marketing your boat so that as people are doing their research, yours is one of the ones that they consider. Don't wait until someone else is already somewhat made up their mind. And, you know, and I'll, I'll say this, you, you throw a couple of names out there. I'm going to throw one out there. I'm going to get a lot of flack for this and, you know, so be it. It's not as bad as it used to be, but that was the MO of the Vibe crew for a long time. Hey, I'm thinking about a Wilderness Systems Tarpon or a uh, Native whatever, or I'm thinking about an Old Town this or a Hobie this. Uh, you should try the Vibe Seagulls. You should try the Vibe Seagulls. It's like, dude, they didn't even list your brand or a boat that's even comparable to anything that Vibe makes. Mm. And yet you're jumping in there. And so to me, it's been very refreshing for me to be able to actually have firsthand experience to be able to say what I think to sure. these anglers instead of speculating like everybody else. And so that's been the major reason that I did it. Um, but, yeah, I, I just think that that's one of my big pet peeves. If somebody says that, say, hey, based on the criteria, I think you should maybe consider a couple of other boats um, before you make your final decision. That's fine. But just jumping in there, and it's, it's very obvious. You jump in there, the next person's a vibe person, the next person's a vibe person. And it's like you you went to a secret forum and said, hey, guys, there's a post. We need to take it over. Stop. <laughs> it's, it's annoying. And I've been part of pro staffs that have done it. Wilderness Systems used to do it. Bonafide did it for a little while in the beginning. Everybody kind of does it, but stop. If they didn't narrow down your boat to their final two and they said they'd done a couple years worth of research, either provide them some input on the boats that they're considering or just shut up. All right, guys, I got to hear from you. Have you ever posted in a forum on a Facebook post, asked a question about a certain kayak and had a flurry of other people start recommending other kayaks? So let me know that experience, what company that was and how long ago it was. I'm fascinating. I want to read those. So please let me know in the comments. All right, let's head back in. You don't actually have to. Hey, by the way, this is another uh, insight that I'll share with you. You don't actually have to comment on everything on the internet. <laughs> what? I literally what? had a person the other day who <laughs> I'd never spoken to them, didn't know who they were, oh. tagged me in some post, and I lurk more now on Facebook than I than I engage. But they tagged me in a post, and I responded. And then the guy like constantly wanted to be combative with what I was saying, and I was like, "That's fine, man. You, you got your opinion. Here's mine. We, we're not going to engage in an exercise where you try to." prove yourself right on my platform or I try to prove you wrong. I don't care. But then the guy like 
kept on and was popping up in different places, starting to contradict everything that I said, went into my YouTube videos and started commenting on my videos. Mm. And uh, I actually just searched the person's name in Facebook. And there was a post like every six to 10 minutes for hours on end. And so in that case, that person's not even fishing. Because if you're commenting on social media 14 hours straight, every five or six minutes, you're probably in a basement somewhere just doing that. That's all you do. So kind of consider the source when you take intel from people about something that's going to influence a purchasing decision. All right, guys, there you have it. The best and worst kayak fishing companies of 2023. And this is just like a 30 minute video cut from an hour and a half interview that Chad and I did on the state of the union, the state of the kayak fishing industry. And so if you want the full length, I know Chad's going to be putting that up on his new podcast here. So go check that out. I'll have not the full length, but this section on in another section that I cut from it on my podcast kayak fishing obsessed but man if you're brand new to kayak fishing in general i got the perfect series for you beginner to amateur kayak angler in three videos and i got that playlist for you right there